The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unu Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. No! Hello, everybody. Oh, my God. I feel like I haven't been around, but you know what? I haven't. This is Kathy. It's time for the F word. You know what? I absolutely want to take a second here and and thank Jimmy because without him, you wouldn't hear from me and also without Joe Savino. So, you know, a special shout out to those guys. Armed Radio is where it's at. And, um, Stay tuned, y'all, because in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have a really big announcement and most likely be changing the format, there's an F word, with um, famous football financial, uh, I don't know, another F word, but it goes with that. But um, just wait, because I'm really excited about it. It's a new situation that uh, I'll be announcing later. Anyway, tonight I've got, once again, my good friend, she's my person, Amy Lynn, on the phone with me. She's calling all the way from Scottsdale, Arizona. How you doing? Good, dear. How are you? Hello, everyone. I hope you're well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, Amy, um. You just started something new. I want to hear about it. You got a new job. That's so exciting because yes. nope, you know what? That helps. No, right. nope, shush. We're going to keep it secret. We're not, you're not going to say gonna... what you're doing. No, no. Super exciting. Super happy. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to disclose it all yet. Mm-mm. Nope. You don't need to do that. But uh, no. I just wanted to say I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you because this is, you know, something Thank that you. helps you with a couple of F words. Finances your future not saying the f word as much (laughs) and not saying the f word because you have been feeling very f worded up because of it so now it's so much better so much better so exactly so for people that don't know amy and i met over 20 years ago that's crazy 20 what one or 22 now no it's 20 because mason's only 20 I met you right, when, he you was, when he was Again, you and math. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, Amy and I, got, I mean, go way back. In the time when I was so sick, though, was, you know when you have a friend, like for real friends, when they're there, they see you at your absolute worst, and they're still there, and they're supporting you. They're holding your hand, and that's my person. That's you, girl. Aw, oh, back at you, honey. I love- are you there? I lost you. Yeah, are you there? Okay. Are you there? Yeah, I am. I'm here. Are you there? <laughs> yep. So, Amy and I went, okay, so we started this job selling sports memorabilia, coins. We talked about that before, and then we went into yep. Uh, to the financial services area, learning about annuities, life insurance, safe money. Long-term care. Long-term care. Y'all, if yep. you're not looking at that, you better. Saying that right All now. All of the above look at, yes. But um, I want to talk about some different F words. So first of all, you know what? I want to talk about favorites. Favorites is always a good thing to talk about. So Amy, number one. I'm going to just ask you some questions. What's your favorite color? Oh, black, I'd say. Is black a color or a hue? I don't know. I'm going to go with color. Okay. I don't know. Look it up. I'm I'm not sure. I don't know. Hue, I don't know. Who cares? (laughs) Okay. Favorite band? That's so easy. Anybody that knows me knows what I'm going to say to this. Motley. Motley Crew. Yes, because I'm still eternally 12. 
<laughs> okay, and so everybody, you need to know this. So everybody would call Amy, 80s Amy, because she's a hairband junkie. Yes. Or, or is it groupie? Junkie. <laughs> I was teasing. <laughs> she's hairband junkie. So Motley Crue, is that the one with, uh, what's his name? Neil Young? No, I'm just kidding. Vince Neil. I saw Vince Neil recently, yes. I was just kidding. I love to act stupid when I actually know the answer. But, I know um, you do. You like to do that to me. I know. So you just saw Vince Neil, and there was a movie that we just watched on Netflix, not together, and we didn't chill. Um, it, w- it was about Motley Crue, right? Yeah, The Dirt was about Motley Crue. The yeah. Dirt, that's what it was. So, and I called you and I made you watch it. And I enjoyed it. I know. I did. I, you know, I don't even... I can't imagine life without Netflix anymore. I just can't. It's I one of the best, best things ever. You don't? I know. I'm too busy. No, um, I'm too busy. Okay. Okay. Got to have those days sometimes. But, well, that's what Redbox is Oh, for. you went... <laughs> yes. Okay, so... Who's your favorite person in Motley Crue? Oh, definitely Mickey. He's the brains. But isn't he like? Is who's the okay? I, the, one of the guys. I'm sorry, but he's just not really good looking. Who was that one? That would be Mick Mars. That would be the guitar player, Kathy. It's six strings instead of four. Mickey plays four strings. He plays bass on the left side of the stage. Okay. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> no, I, I really don't need to see him because I just remember he's not very good looking. But you know, by default, he gets another F word just by being in the band. Right? No, of course he does. Wow. Yeah, multiple, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Favorite food? Mexican. Hello, where do I live? Well, you used to live in Minnesota. I did. Was it, was it your favorite food Mexican here, too? Yes, but this is real Mexican food down here. It's amazing. Like authentic. I like spicy food. What's your favorite food? Well, you know what though? No, I'm. T- I'm. This is my show. I'm doing the interviewing. I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> Just kidding. No, here's what is amazing to me. You like food spicy, but you're like a five year old when it comes. <laughs> my taste buds. Yes, I know. To like, I mean, cheeseburger plain. <laughs> um, like, dude, hey, just drive the bus and back it over me a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just don't. Yeah, I don't understand that. My favorite food is a ribeye steak. Oh, now if we're talking steak, I want a filet mignon, please. There's, that's an F word. Oh, it's a really good cut of salmon. Oh, Ooh. salmon. I love salmon, too. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. But now, a okay. good ribeye with a baked potato and asparagus. I'm like, good. About- what did you make me? Oh, my God. You made me the mm. best dinner. Steak a poivre, twice baked potatoes, oh and salad vinaigrette. Oh, my God. No, you know what? Told- what did I tell you that night? I was... Thank you. <laughs> yes. If you were too, because it was so good. Yes. It um, that's the meal that made Keaton, because <laughs> I made that for his father on Valentine's Day. Really? Yep. Yeah. Did that, and then I made cho- I, chocolate I mousse for recipe. dessert. Oh gosh, just Google it. It's so easy. So easy. Oh, okay. You get some yeah. nice four inch thick. Flies. Anyway, so I have to tell everyone how incredible Kathy is. Uh, she was at my house watching my dogs from hell. I love them. I miss them very much. And they were the dogs from hell. I love them. Never getting were, a dog without a going. You know, they were, they were so naughty. sweet. They were sweet, though. Super sweet. Super mischievous. They're they were beagles. Me. Okay? They were beagles. Yep. Yes, they did. So and I, lucky. You were at my house watching my dogs. And you text me, and you're like, hey, I'm having dinner ready for you. I'm like, oh, my God, you're the best. I love you so much. 
Chester Dave Swine and all that crap came home to a home cooked meal. That honestly, by far, is one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. I have to tell you this, and oh. everybody needs to know it, how amazing it was and how sweet it is of you as a human. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, for real. For real. Well, I appreciate that. Well, and you want to know something funny was that was <clears throat> because I had made it the night before, too, at a right. date over at your house. Yep. Did I tell you that? I can't remember. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> but I was like, well, I got this. And I actually bought enough so I could make some for you. Because otherwise I would have only bought two steaks. But, right. Uh, so I bought extra. I wanted you to try it, too, because it is. It's like, I don't know. It is just, you know what? I got to say, that's my favorite. If I were okay. to, you know what? It's, it's up there. No, I like a good ribeye first. And then that. Okay, so what's your favorite color? Purple. Purple. Oh, I know why. That old neighbor of yours. Yes. Well, Prince, for one, yes. Vikings. That old neighbor of yours. That old neighbor of mine. He's he's still there. He's just not alive anymore. But right, yes. his ashes are there. Um, right. No, and then obviously Vikings purple. Duh. Oh, sorry. I mean, that was like, that was more than, that was before even Prince. That was like. Oh, that's true. Right. Because I grew up loving. I mean, you know what? Here's, here's a really good memory. Like, one of my favorite, you know, like, favorite sport, football. And my favorite memories, you know, we just have Father's Day. Um, we both, we're so blessed. We got to spend it with our fathers. Uh, oh my so many god! People, awesome. I know so many people don't get to, and it breaks. Yeah, I got to FaceTime with my stepdad. That <clears> was <throat> great. Your step, you're so lucky. He's awesome too. I am. He really is. <clears throat> I'm super lucky. And so when I was little, I mean, I went to football games with my dad. Loved it. My least favorite game I went to with him was. Um, it was in the Metrodome, but I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I'm so old, oh my God, that I went to the first stadium, Met Stadium, with my dad, and that's when they played outside, but, um, <coughs> excuse me, my worst memory of going to one of those games was, he'd get tickets, because he was a purchaser for this one company, and they'd, you know, different companies would give him tickets, so we went, and, we're, and it was a Vikings-Packers game. And it was almost all Packers fans. <clears throat> and I was, oh, yeah? I was so bothered. Hold on, to some my like, I still have this sinus infection I'm fighting. Did you ever drink pineapple juice <clears throat> like I told you to? I did. I drank. I just drank the last of it tonight. Okay. But it gives me heartburn. Get that? Why does it give me heartburn? Probably I don't because know. It needs, your son says little snowflake. I have no idea. I don't know. Probably because it needs rum. I have no clue. I don't know. No clue. But no. So, I mean, that game, I want to say I was probably 17, 18 years old. And I okay. was so angry. I was just like, are you kidding me? This is our stadium. This is our house. And they're here talking smack to me. And I'm looking around and I'm looking at all the jerseys and everything. And I'm going, oh, no way. It is almost all Packers jerseys here. And I don't remember what year that was. I mean, we must not have been that great that year or something. But okay. I swore that I would never again go to a Vikings-Packers game. Ever. And I didn't okay. do it again until I went with Griff. And it was opening game in U.S. Bank Stadium. And it was amazing. No way. We won. And it was amazing. It was beautiful. And Aaron Rodgers ran into Anthony Barr. And he was out for the season. So it was such an awesome game. <laughs> so yeah. happy. But, oh, my uh, God. You oh, gosh. And I, was, and I was standing by. Who was I standing by? Chuck Foreman. Foreman. F-word. 
Um, and I'm like, oh, what happened? Because I, of course, was, you know, socializing. And he goes, you didn't see it? I go, what happened? He's like, yeah, um, he's down. And I go, oh. Oh, no, and it wasn't Foreman. It was um, I some other guy. I can't remember his name. But I'm like, oh, no. Oh, that's too bad. And he's looking at me. He goes, really? Well, bad. And he goes, and he goes, well, then say it. I go, okay, I'm glad. <laughs> he was like, say it like you mean it. I'm like, yes. He goes, there you go. You know what? This is our, and he said, he goes, this is our house. I'm like, yes. So, I mean, it was oh my so God, funny. That's so, I, I haven't regretted any Vikings games against the Packers ever since. We've been we've been good. We've been good. But um so yeah, that's why my favorite color is purple. Okay. And who's your favorite role model? Hmm. I know. Wow. Because you know you're gonna go next. That's a good one. Um I know. Duh. Hi, I got you. This is going to sound very, very weird, but uh, I've had different favorite role models throughout my life. Okay, well, give me, like, your top three right now and why on each one. Man, that's hard. My daddy, obviously. And why? Yep. You know what, because my dad, and, and when I say my dad, I also mean my mom mom the two of them okay and the reason yeah, why so the reason why is number one the fact that i never had to hear them fight that's amazing so obviously i mean they've been married 56 years obviously they've had arguments obviously there's been cross words but the one thing that they always did is they took it out of the room. They never did it in front of my brother and me. And wow. that to me, I mean, that's the, the number one thing is that they set a good example as yeah. far as how to treat your spouse. Um, oh, totally. Oh, yeah. I mean, and then also, duh, you know, they're both of them, their service to our nation, both being in the Army. Um, yeah, thank you. Very much for me all the time, please. Exactly. I super respect that. Exactly. Because it's a job I can do, and I'm fully 100% aware of. And then, you know, it's it's also because, I mean, I've had so many times during my life where I've had to lean on them, and they've always been there, and it's unconditional. And, you know, it's always good knowing that, it's never as bad as you think it is. Well, they always got your back. That's what Alan does. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, and they they do. They love you unconditionally. Um, mine have oh, been. Oh. Granted, I was a hard kid. The fact that they still let me live under their roof. And my mom did tell me later on that I was one of their reasons that they fought. <laughs> you know, right. like. I'm sorry, but sorry, mommy. Yeah, because I was a little shit. Um, but like one of one of the, my mom and I were talking one time was you know because I was like a total daddy's girl and I still am. But oh, I mean, my mom kept a lot of things secrets from my dad. Uh oh, because he knew that. It was for both me and my dad because he'd be crushed, but even worse is I hated to disappoint him. Until I got a little bit older and then I didn't care. <laughs> well, and then you became a teenager and an alien. Like yes, this. and then I didn't care about anybody but myself because that's how teenagers yep. are. And it's, you know, I don't get it, but it is. It's a total teen thing and the selfish entitled stupidity that goes with you know because in and, and parents always say you know what 
when you're older, you're going to understand. And we always do. It's like, okay, I get it. Yep. You were right. You were always right. Yep. You just don't know everything that I got away with. That's okay. Oh, my horse. And, and, and so then I want to say my third person that I really admire um, oh, is Andre Fluellen. Yeah. Okay, so Andre Fluellen is a newer friend of mine. I met him uh, a little over a year ago. Um, well, I know the name, but I don't know why. Okay, so Andre played football for the Detroit Lions. He lives in Atlanta. He's married. He's a beautiful wife, and he's got two beautiful little girls. But he's a great man of faith. And he's a really great man of faith. And he shows it in his actions. And nobody's perfect. We all fall short. You know, but Andre has, he's helped me more than he ever realized just in his words. And Amy, I think I read you one of his texts. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. He's amazing. He is amazing. And actually, you know what? I want to I wanna pull it up because this, this um, makes me think of, you know, another topic that I wanted to get to tonight as well. But um, Andre had um, posted something on social media, and I reacted to it. And sent him a text. And let's see, where is it here? Find it. Because it was it was around it was around Thanksgiving. It was right after Thanksgiving, I think. And I just, you know, and everybody knows that I, I deal with the pain of Lyme disease. But um, something he posted made me reach out to him and I said Thank you for that post just now. It's weird how God puts things in front of you when you're supposed to see it. You're the first person I'm telling this to, but I can tell I've got some sort of depression or anxiety going on. I don't know what to do about it, and I haven't been able to pull myself out of it. They say Lyme disease causes these mood swings, but it's never been this bad. I feel overwhelmed. I think it just helped me right now to just be able to admit it to you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit send because I think that'll be the first step in feeling better, right? And so then he yeah. replied He replied back to me because I was. It was just like I was sitting here by myself and I was just, my whole body, my skin, every single, my hair hurt. Everything hurt. And I was just so devastated, right? So then uh-huh. he, re- and that was late at night. And he replied first thing in the morning, like five in the morning. Hey, sorry I didn't reach out to you last night. I was putting my kids to bed. But I get it. Trust me. One thing I realized is I didn't have a sense of purpose. So when football left and money left, it was as if I had no reason to offer anyone anything anymore. So I'm going to challenge you to take small steps to find your calling and your purpose. Your purpose will be tied to two things. Number one, the thing you do the easiest and get the greatest results from. And number two, your greatest pain. I say these two things because your purpose will be something you're naturally gifted at. To me, it's your ability to connect people. And also, the pain will be something that you never want anyone else to go through. So your purpose is your service to humanity. It's your strength combined with your service. If you ever need an ear, I'm here. But I will always challenge you to find purpose over profit and make a difference over making a dollar. When you do that, profit and dollars will naturally flow to you. So when I say, yes, he's one of them, there you go. By him saying those words to me, I thought about that. I, I thought about it and I thought about it. Stayed home on New Year's Eve by myself, and thinking about those words, I just 
really found my purpose. You know, like when I said, if it takes away from my faith, my family, my finance, or my focus, I'm not going to do it anymore. No. So, I mean, I have Andre. Andre didn't even realize what an impact he made, and I had to let him know that. I mean, right. That's he, so true that you did, because he still needed to know how much that meant to you. Oh, my gosh, yes. And, I mean... Really, he really did. I mean, I I think just reading those words, and I think everybody needs to. You know, it's like purpose over profit, making a difference over making a dollar. We should all well, live like that. Heart, more people would be better human. Oh my gosh! Right? I mean, Here. that's in a nutshell. If you do things for the service of humanity, you're gonna, you know. Yeah, I mean, you have no reason to doubt that you're not going to do well. Doubt that you're going, or doubt that you're going to do well. I said that the wrong way. <laughs> I doubt that I'm not going to. Um, but I didn't say it right the first time. But I mean, so many people do things. But you know, a lot of times, Amos, we get taken. And oh, no, 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 no. Let's not address that. Oh, well, no. I think we should. Because you know what? I mean, because it's not just us. You know, a lot of famous people have made a lot of money and they've lost a lot of money. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight, too. You know, fame and fortune or none at all. Right? Right. So, I mean... Fame comes with a price sometimes, and I think what happens is, you know, when you, you take away purpose over profit and making a difference over making a dollar, a lot of times that's when people get caught up and they lose their money. Oh, exactly. I mean, think about it. Okay, so I was, I'm looking at some of these famous people. I've got a list of 18 celebrities who were rich and famous before losing all their money. The Serious? <clears throat> yep. The first person that they have on here, Michael Jackson. King of Pop was supposedly $400 million in debt when he died in 2009. He was close to foreclosure on his Neverland home. Wow. Large amount of spendings required him to take out loans, many of which he never paid back. Then his money problems got worse once he was involved in a lot of lawsuits. And before he died, he planned on getting out of debt by touring. So his estate resolved the financial issues, and now he's been a top-earning dead celebrity since he died. You know, So he made more money passing away. <clears throat> the next one, think about this. I I like this guy, Nicholas Cage. I like, you know, here's what I'm finding out. And, you know, we'll leave it to later on in life to find this out, of course. Some people, there's, there's either people like Nicholas Cage or they don't. There's no happy medium about him. Right? I don't know why or whatever, and I don't really care for but I just noticed this weird little trend. Last two months. You know? Mm hmm. You know what? Okay. So <clears throat> you know what I just thought of? You know what I just thought of? What? Both what? Michael Jackson and Nicolas Cage were married to Lisa Marie Presley. Oh! You didn't know that? No, I never thought of that until just, you just mentioned it. Yeah, weird. And so, so he Very was. Good. Earning like forty million, he earned like forty million dollars back in two thousand nine, but he oh was also a huge spender, like a lot of homes, artifacts, automobiles, lavish. Yes. So then the IRS placed tax liens on his multiple properties, and he had to hand over more than six million for failing to pay taxes. Who doesn't pay their taxes? What's wrong? You know what? Here's the deal. I don't think that these guys do it themselves. They have people. 
they're oh, supposed to take I care of this. That I believe. Oh, totally. So, I mean, oh. he's nefariously, oh, God, I'm using a, that's a cool word. He's nefariously spending money, but he doesn't know what's going on behind the scenes. He's supposed to have True. people taking care of it. But because of that, he had to sell belongings like a comic book. That was like worth a lot of money, and um, so I mean, was that like just... Spider Man or something like that? I mean, it was like an old school comic book, like stuff we grew oh, up with. Oh, something! Right? And isn't that ridiculous too? When I think of all the shit that I've thrown away, that if I would have kept, that was worth so much money. Oh, it's ridiculous, isn't it? So you know what, though, my ex husband. Oh my gosh, he still gets sick about this. And it even makes me sick. So when he was a kid, he collected baseball cards. Amy, you and I were in that business. We were in that business. I was in that business. He had an entire shoebox full. And he wrapped um, masking Ah. tape around this box when he went off to the army. And he wrote all over it, do not throw this away. He comes back, guess what? His mom threw it away. He never even opened it. Threw it. That bugs me so much because he had one of the most rare, and he knew it, Mickey Mantle cards. Yeah, like his rookie card or something. I don't know which one. Oh, my God. But, like, would have been worth millions of dollars. What? That's crazy. I know. I know. That's crazy. Well, then you look at this. Floyd Mayweather. I mean, you hear his name a lot. Oh, I don't even know who he is. And you know who I don't follow that stuff. Yeah, I mean, his nickname is Money. Money Mayweather, right? Uh-huh. He owed the IRS money for over a decade. How does that happen? Seriously, like you or I do it? Hell, we're in trouble. Oh, he, my God. Our wages are garnished. He, okay, so it says here his failure to pay taxes resulted in $22.2 million in debt to the IRS. This is why you give people that you trust and work with good insurance agents and advisors so you can prevent this from happening to you if you don't have 22 million. No, and you the thing is, it's like, get, okay, because you know what, these guys and women, you know, it's not just men, because we're all guilty of, you know, being lavish when we get the chance. But, well, not all of us, but, I mean, seriously, when you get that big chunk of money or whatever at first, Put it in what? Maybe a nice big life insurance policy. So when that would be the smart thing to do, right? Or you, you know, well, yeah, you want to protect what you've accumulated. But you want it. You want it. You know what? You want to take a big chunk of it and then have it for later when you're not making the big bucks. If something like that comes up, like if you're a movie star and all of a sudden you, you know, get in an accident. And your face is all disfigured. Nobody wants you in their movies anymore. You're not able to make the money that you used to make. Well, now you, oh, that's right. I got all that money in that policy. Exactly. And I can live off of that, right? So, I mean. Yeah, you can strip. As long as you don't mess it, you can strip it out tax-free. I mean, now think of this, too. Mike Tyson, he earned over $300 million. Sorry. Sorry. All right. He earned over $300 million and had to declare bankruptcy. That's crazy. I mean, you know, what I'm seeing here is a trend. It's It looks like taxes. And you know what? I can't, yeah, I guess I can blame them, but they're busy doing their stuff and they trust people. They're they supposed to the have their people. people. That's the problem. They're and trusting their own people. I know. And, or, you know, you're just being blissfully ignorant and, or you think you're above it. 
you know. I'm going to go with option B. I'll be involved. How about that? Yeah. Well, and then the, um, Stephen Baldwin. I like Stephen Baldwin. Remember him on The Celebrity I, Apprentice? I didn't watch it. Yeah, 100% honest You didn't you, even watch it when it. Brett Michaels no. was on it? I think I watched like three episodes. Because and my, okay. Three Brett Michaels wrong. When, yeah, Brett, when Brett Michaels was on, you need to keep your phone out, your mouth up to the phone, by the way. Um, when when Brett Michaels was on, my mom watched it, and my mom I actually got a crush on him. I, oh, that's, yeah, my mom did, too. She was like, I kind of get it now. I'm like, kind of? Yeah. <laughs> no, because like, he was going to be playing at the casino in Hayward or in Hinkley. He's like, I kind of want to go to that's. I went, no, you don't. <laughs> I was like, Mom, I don't want to go see Brett Michaels with you. I know it's horrible. I'll oh, go with my mom. You, no, my mom? Oh, my gosh. We should just bring the mom to Brett Michaels. That'd be super fun. I know. That'd be hysterical. And then get well, sure. VIP passes and go meet them afterwards. So that they can say they, they were with Oh, my God. We have oh to go God. here. Amy? Okay, whoever has the power to do this has to help us out with this one. No, okay. No, we can do that. That's easy. No, okay. <laughs> we have to go here. We're going back. How many years ago was that when we went to Brett Michaels? Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> so... At least, well... I want to say, like, 10 plus years ago. Oh, my gosh. This was so funny. So, he was playing at a casino... I'd never gone to see him before, and Amy talked to me into going, because I was like, meh, okay, well, I'll go. Like yeah, and, and we got a hotel room. Yes, and we got a hotel room, and so we could party, and Amy had this bright idea. She goes, hey, you want me to spray tan you? And I go, Okay. And so okay. I I just stand in the tub. I don't even remember. Was I just like in my bra and underwear, or was I naked? No, you were in your swimsuit. Oh, we knew we had a knife. Okay, so that's right. We there was a pool there. Well, okay, wait, that's you right. Your swimsuit on. Don't put your swimsuit on. Okay, so I have my swimsuit on, and she's like, "Okay, close your eyes, but don't squint, and just you know, and let me spray your front." Okay. So she sprays my face, my body, and then I have to turn around. She sprays my backside. She's standing in the shower. And I'm standing the in the shower. And we're doing this. And, and I'm, I'm putting complete trust and faith in my friend. And then I turn Is around again. I turn around and she sprays my face again. And I go, wait, why'd you do that? Oh, because I think I missed some spots. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so then we get ready and you know I think I look pretty cute I got my cowboy you hat adorable. I got yeah, my cowboy hat adorable. that I got in Cabo you know and people one thing you must know about 80s Amy is 80s Amy must be in the front so oh, my. we have like well, at least I did. You didn't drink a lot because you couldn't drink. You'd have like two. Kathy, and... what? I was wasted, and I ended up buying a, a freaking Brett Michaels T-shirt with horses on the front, knowing full oh, well I'm terrified of horses. That's how drunk I was. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I found it the other day. I, I got you, but laughing. you know what? You probably only had two drinks, though. That's all it took you. Yeah, but I, yeah, back then, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But I was pretty hammered, and I just remember, I remember walking, remember this? We're walking through the casino, and I go, huh, I must look really good tonight. People keep looking at me. Remember that? I did. I totally did. And I'm like, yeah, you had a really good year. You look fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like walking. I'm oblivious. <clears throat> I'm still drinking. I'm having fun. Well, then we go up to the front. So we're in front of the stage. Brett Michaels out. He's singing. We're having fun. And he even, remember, he pointed right at me. Yeah, he did with your cowboy head. He gave you, like, a lovingly approval nod. He, and I'm like, yes, he loved my hat. 
Nope. I don't think it was my hat he was pointing at. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because then, you know, we never, I mean, not once did we leave the front of the stage because we never would have gotten back up there. So didn't leave to go to the bathroom. And I wouldn't let you leave. You've been up front with like this at any time. Not the first. And so I didn't go to the bathroom. So then right afterwards, we met the band and we took pictures with the band. There was some weird guy with a major mohawk. I think he was the drummer. And yes, it was the drummer. And I remember he was, wasn't feeling well. Um, I don't know why I remember that. But, I mean, so we took pictures with everybody. And then I finally went to the bathroom and came out and I looked in the mirror. And I yelled, hey, man. Super loud. And I'm in the stall next to you. <laughs> you can, going, I, what? What the fuck is going on? Oops, sorry. That's where it's totally dropped. And I can't, you know, and I can't hear you very well. Why are you muffled? I don't know. Is that any better? Are you on speaker? Is that better? No. Maybe I'm my earbuds. Oh, take your earbuds off and, and talk into your phone. Oh, okay. Okay, that's way better. Oh, yeah, that's way loud. Do you know how loud you are on speakerphone when I accidentally hit the wrong button and you're in my ear screaming? <laughs> I bet. <laughs> but now we can hear you on the radio. So, no, everybody, everybody, I was an Oompa Loompa. I was an Oompa Loompa orange person at the casino. Brett Michaels pointed at me and laughed. That's what it was. Pointed at you. me because he looked back at the rest of his band, pointed at me. Like, chuck her out. I'm like thinking, that's because I have a really cool hat and he thinks I'm hot. No, exactly. I'm orange. Hello. I'm orange. <laughs> it was like, are you kidding me? You're kidding me. Oh my God. But it was, you know what? Some of the best me. memories. That was so funny. <clears throat> oh, my God. And we have pictures of this. That's the funnier part. That's the most. And then what was really hysterical, I remember showing one of my friends, Lynn, that I worked with. He couldn't breathe when I showed her the picture because she pointed out the fact that I had a mustache <laughs> from it, too. She's like, look at you. Oh, she, my God. She's like. Are you, I never noticed that. Well, you need to look at it closer. Because it will make you need to it will make it to me again now. Now I know. Now I will. It will make your sides hurt. <laughs> so, oh my yeah, send it send it back to me. I'll send it comment. back to you afterwards. <laughs> but oh I'll, I'll have to. We'll have to post it. We'll post it for everybody. But oh, oh my gosh! Even for both of us. Yeah, bring it on. You need to find the pictures because it really shows up even more so when I was standing next to the the um, the drummer. Yes, yeah, so the one with the because he was really pale white and I'm orange. So my orange skin and his blue hair made me I, I could have had that and I would have been an oompa loompa. His blue hair. Oh my I know, I know. So okay, so Brett Michaels, do you think I mean, okay, I wonder about him. I mean, I don't know if he's on this list or not because I haven't gotten through all of it yet. But Amy I mean, a lot of musicians go broke, too. And I think it's the same thing, because oh now, you know what? Here's one of the guys I like. I like 50 Cent. 50. 50. 50 Cent. 50. Or do you say 50 Cent? That's, I don't know. That's so white. Wait, I think it's 50 Cent. I don't 50. know. 50. I know, right? But, um, you know, he's, you know, he started as a rapper, but, I mean, he's got a huge... <clears throat> Business empire. Sorry. Oh my god, totally. You were, but um, he started having trouble in 2008 when his stocks took a dive. Um, in 2015, he was 32 and a half million in debt, and he had oh my lawsuits. God. Now, okay, and this to me is on him. He had unpaid child support payments. Really? Come on. You make that kind of money and you have unpaid child support? That's ridiculous. Not That's cool. cool. Not cool. And the next year he declared bankruptcy. 
But more recently, he got lucky when Bitcoin surged in value. He received 700 Bitcoins as payment for a 2014 album, and his share of cryptocurrency came to be worth millions. What? What? Oh, my gosh. You know what? Even presidents are not immune. No, nobody's immune from having no Our 18th president, do you know who the 18th president was? Oh. No. What? Why not? You should know this. I don't off the top of my head. <laughs> Just kidding. Sorry. Like I'd remember. Ulysses S. Ulysses S. Grant. So he went broke after leaving the White House. But um, let's see. He became a partner in a financial firm. But um, one of the partners embezzled the investors' money, leaving them bankrupt. He was receiving no a military pension, but it was not enough, as the president was also suffering from throat cancer. That's not... Oh, that makes me feel bad. To make money, Grant had Mark Twain publish his memoirs, but he died before he could make his life story. Oh, that's sad. Aww. Speaking that's of Mark Twain... Sad. Speaking of Mark Twain, he grew up poor after his father died when he was 11. Throughout his career, he desired to become rich, even though he married up on the social ladder. Oh my gosh, his dream never came true. After the success of Grant's biography and the adventures of Tom Sawyer, Twain's publishing house went bankrupt. Financial failings contributed to depression, and he had to declare bankruptcy. Wow. wow. With more That's successful crazy. writing and a popular speaking tour, he got back to financial security, but then he lost a $30,000 investment in a protein. Hey. You know that they had protein back then. A the powder. I didn't no, either. Um, Amy, here's another one. Can't touch this. Who's that? Can't touch this. That's true. You legit to quit. Yes. Um, after that, he yeah. soon had $30 million in the bank, but he went on a spending spree. That's his fault. And he declared bankruptcy because he was $13 million in debt. That's crazy. So he bought a $1 million mansion that he made $30 million worth of adjustments to. He staffed 200 people in his home. He bought a horse stable where he kept 19 racehorses. And combined wow. with that, he had a lot of lawsuits. Wow. And, wow. I'm just looking through some of these. Well, I did not know Kim Basinger did. She I didn't either. $20 million. She paid $20 million for a, a town. She was expected to create a tourist attraction, but she declared bankruptcy and had to sell the property for a loss. You know what? I don't feel sorry for that. You know, I really don't. Whatever. I'm sorry. You know what? One of my favorite songs is Let's Get It On. Marvin Gaye. I had to file for bankruptcy. Uh, Say what? Marvin Gaye filed for bankruptcy. No way. Are you serious? Father killed him. That's crazy. The things you learned that you had no idea, right? See, this is a very educational show. Um, but what you know, what I'm really seeing here is I'm really seeing a trend. There's a Kurt Schilling who was a pitcher for the Red Sox. Oh man! So he created a video game studio. Uh, he put fifty million of his own money. He secured seventy five million in bonds. Rhode, the state wow. of Rhode Island, his business failed. Wow. The company was $120 million. That is insane. Okay, here's what I'm really shocked on. I did not know. Burt Reynolds. What? I've lost Seriously? more money than is possible because I just haven't watched it. There you go. He said it. I haven't watched it. Wow. That's exactly what's going on 
He had a string of failed investments. He had real estate, private jet, 150 horses, over $100,000 in two pays. He had a very expensive marriage to Lonnie Anderson and a very expensive divorce. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, he had, because of cost and dwindling income, he couldn't pay back a $3.7 million loan to CBS. He declared bankruptcy while he was $11.2 million in debt. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. I think you off speaker phone, so I'm going to apologize right now for noise if you hear. Okay. I don't know. My phone's stupid. It's per usual. So here's one, and then, um, okay. Something that I think. Well, don't, I mean, I think it's, I'm going to read this one, but I I don't know how people feel about this, but Willie Nelson, I love this man. Oh, yeah. How but, can you not? I mean, he's great. He is who he is. He's Willie. So, you know, exactly. lead with Willie. Um, you, know, you, get, you get what you see. It, right. Marijuana smoking icon, but he, it was, guess what? Oh. Another tax thing. He had a lawyer negotiate his tax bill down to $6 million, but he couldn't pay up still. They raided his home. Crazy. They seized almost everything he owned, including, okay, <clears throat> 20 properties, most of his instruments and music collection. Oh, my God. That breaks my heart. <clears throat> Nelson was forced to record the IRS tapes. Will buy my memories. Fans organized fundraisers. For the down on his luck musician. Aw, what good people. <clears throat> right? That that restores my faith in humanity. Seriously. No, honestly, I mean my gosh. I mean, who wouldn't love Willie? And I, I love that. I mean I'm sorry you oh, lost yeah, sure. I'm sorry you lost twenty homes. <laughs> it was just like what? Uh, what? Yeah, right. Wow, Gary Coleman, you know, what you talking about, Willis? Yes, Willis. Okay, so he, after after that show, he couldn't find any other work. I mean, I'm sorry, but he had to declare bankruptcy. Another guy, um, lawyer fees and bad investments. And yeah. after all of that, he worked as a security guard. Wow. When he died, he had $100 in cash. Damn. That's so sad. Um, let's see, it looks like the last one on this list. This one, okay, do you know who sings Dunka Shane? Little darling, Dunka Shane. But you I've don't. I've heard the song, but I don't know who it is. Wayne Newton. So, Thank you. Yeah, so, I mean, he's back, you know, like 60s, but I mean, Las Vegas royalty, really, when you think about it. So he's a major lounge oh, singer. Oh. He was the highest earning performer back in 1983. 83, that's a new word. 83. 83. Wow. By 1992, bankrupt, $20 million in debt. Even though he made his way out of debt, his monies didn't, his problems didn't stop there. The IRS sued him, failing to pay $1.8 million on the sale of a house. Property wow. was seized for failing to pay off a $3.5 million loan. Damn. So financial issues and legal problems. So, fame and fortune, folks. Easily. I mean, so, they say money can't buy happiness. What do you think, Game? I think money allows you to not worry about money. <clears throat> but look at that. Like money allows you to not worry about money, but if, like, like, um... Uh, which guy was it that said, because I... Oh, Burt Reynolds said, because I didn't think about it. You think right. when you have so much money that you spend it and you don't think about it and you assume that it's being taken that. care of, you've only got yourself to blame. And, folks, you know, the, the number one thing that people need to remember, you know, financial literacy needs to be taught. I mean, 
I was not taught financial literacy in school, were you? No. Your parents taught you. Right. So, well, honestly... You figured it out, then you had to go home and eat. <laughs> right. And it, no. it, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're making 40000 or $40 million. If you're not paying attention to what you've got, seriously, make sure you get... Somebody that you trust, somebody that is recommended to you by somebody that you trust, instead of these... Somebody not your best interest at heart. Exactly. I mean, like I started it out with, purpose over profit, making a difference over making a dollar, that's when the money is going to flow naturally to you. And I yep. get sickened by these people that are behind these entertainers that mean the world to us, there is no reason they have, like Willie, given us so much joy. Who doesn't love Willie Nelson? And I don't care how you feel about pot or not. Willie Nelson, you know, Waylon and Willie and the boys. My gosh. To showing right there that his fans Here's how I look at raise it. money Legalize for him. Legalizing acts would have overhead on your estate. Boom, legalize it everywhere. Everybody's going to pay for it. It would be like the witness bill. That's how it is out here. Yeah. Oh, different out here. Well, now I think Willie has his own weed line. He does. Does he? Hey, we go. <laughs> well, I, I think... Uh, I think that's great because he's always going to have the last laugh because he's always going to be high. <laughs> so, well, yeah, exactly. good for him. Why wouldn't he, right? Good for him. Miss oh Amy, God, look yeah. at this. So this is how fast an hour goes. But everybody, I, oh I want my, you to think you about kidding? that. You know what? Really, really think about on the financial side of the house. Pay attention. Pay your taxes. You know, get be, with somebody you actually trust exactly, and just look into exactly. you money wise. And get a second opinion. Get a second opinion. Or a third. Get or a third. third. Get more. Find somebody that you trust. Before you make your decision. Exactly. Exactly. It's Say the effort. And I'm saying goodnight. Good night, Jimmy. <laughs> good night, Jimmy. Yeah.